What is this? 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 What is uh, hi guys, welcome to What Is This Podcast, episode number 18, the third episode of season 2. Uh, I'm Victor. I'm Pepper 5. And uh, it's been a, a busy week. How are you? How have you been? I've been great. I've been awesome. Um, nothing much has been going on. Yeah. Just the usual school stuff, uh, listening to albums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Akuna kitu ati oh have this exciting thing I wanna talk Even about. over the weekend. <laughs> Nothing happened over the weekend. Oh shit. Okay, uh <laughs> Valentine's is getting closer is something I just realized. Mm-hmm. So uh love is in the air, definitely. People are must be nice. People are, <laughs> people are feeling the vibe. People are you know, you you're seeing people off oh, our business is booming right now. Mm. Which is something that's interesting. These are just things I've, I've noted. It's Black History Month. It's Black History Month, yeah. uh, for sure. And I don't know why they give, give Black History Month to be the shortest month of the year. <laughs> I mean, I, mean uh, I don't really know the history of that, the month itself. Of and that is joining in a fire kufanyika in Black History Month. I mean, it's of course it's an American thing. Oh, okay. It's not even the only reason we know about it is because you know. Our affiliations but uh yeah it's because i mean it, it's supposed to be a month to celebrate heritage black heritage and uh things that happened uh, monumental people in the black community that is in the usa and um such and such and you know that way i i don't know those celebrations maybe don't get to us but eh, whatever there are our brothers out there so Happy Black History Month. I was reading a tweet. Someone said that there's a difference between being an African American and just an African. Yeah. What are you? Which so, are you? You're an African. I'm an African. Yeah. Course. Everyone. Come yeah. On. That's why I I don't think. That's why I even don't think those people identify with us. Like yeah. Black Americans. Yeah. Or Especially Afri- if you go to America, people think like we still live in. In the bushes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As it's, Hello, it's, we have a we have internet connection. We have we're doing we're a doing podcast podcasts. right now. As in, so it's it's so, it, I mean that ignorance is is the lions walking. Yeah. In town. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what they think about. It's um, just the same way we think. Like some yeah. things are yeah. in their country happen. are so good. Yeah. yeah, and maybe their situations are it's more trash. fucked up. Yeah, yeah. as in because even you'll find I that think it's perspective. For example, yeah. even you'll find that I think. From a food perspective, we probably eat healthier food than perhaps, perhaps because perhaps. our food is mainly organic. Yesterday, I was in some library and I saw a book that was talking about GMOs in 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 in, that, uh, in that developing Western, countries. That Western culture is slowly creeping into our yeah and our yards and and uh, I mean, because we're seeing a lot of uh, KFCs, uh-huh. a lot of Western brands coming yeah, into the market. The only Western brand that hasn't come here okay there are a lot but burger king came a few years ago yeah um i think the only major one that hasn't come to kenya mcdonald's is mcdonald's but it's in south africa mm-hmm. i think that's that, so, that counts yeah so, so it's already invaded into the african and, market and soon enough it, uh, when once south africa takes a foothold the next place they try to target is kenya this sounds like a science podcast but it's not <laughs> it's, it's a, a music. music it's a music podcast <laughs> so we we, sh- we should jump into it a lot has been happening a the lot past has been week in the music industry specifically the gospel industry which is more like right now looks like uh love and hip hop or <laughs> an episode of Housewives of uh, <laughs> see Bahati has a show <laughs> so it's basically that all that yeah all that Just is on happening a, in a smaller scale okay so th- there's a lot to cover in the gospel industry First, I think we should start with the most pronounced one that's the DK when you beat and okay. hope kid saga so i this story is disgusting on so many levels exactly first of all how it broke is disgusting it was it broke through Xtandela I mean, and I, I, I personally don't like the guy. It's nothing personal. It's just how he moves on the on the I internet. I blocked him on Twitter. Me too. Even on Instagram. Oh, I just don't like him. Okay. The way he moves. I think we share that in common. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Xtandela 
broke the story. So as the story goes, there's this young university student from Nakuru who was trying to get uh, into the music industry, model, the video modeling industry, and was DMing Kenyan artists left, right, and center. As, 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 as that's we, really dangerous. We all know that struggle, though. Of young young people aspiring to be in the industry, you'd rather you'd rather go to an agency and sign yourself up. Yeah, than... but I'm I'm talking about you know in the in the modern age of DIY, do it yourself, where you can do anything for yourself. So I'm trying to get signed. I'll talk to the to the artists themselves specifically mm-hmm. because so I this can chick DM them. So DM'd. She, she I was, never I didn't know that's part of the story. She was DMing everybody, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately unfor- or unfortunately. Hope kid reached out, mm. and so they. All got, this is alleged, by the way. All this is ne- a, because needless to say. Yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. So, uh, Hope kid reached out, and they started chatting here and there, exchange phone numbers, moved from the DMs to WhatsApp, <laughs> and and such and, and such. Slide. <laughs> so, they talked, and apparently, as the story goes, they agreed to have sex. Wow. So, so it was consent. It was consensual, okay. but now. Uh, home girl free, f- uh, came from Nakuru to <laughs> Nairobi all the, all the way to see Hope Kid. <laughs> and when she got to Nakuru, I mean, when she got to Nairobi, Nairobi, they were supposed to go to Hope Kid's house. But then now they, they, she was just, the Hope Kid was like, you'll just come meet me here. When they met there, they got into the car. And in the car was, surprise, surprise, DK Kwenye Beat. So hmm. they drive not to Hope Kid's house, but to DK's house. And once they get there, homegirl knows what it's about to go down. She know she knows what she's there for, you know. Hope kid knows what he's there for, but now goes plot to the, twist. Goes to the plot washroom. Twist. Nini, nini, you you know what I'm what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Comes back to the sitting room. They start making out and all that. And then it, Hope kid is like really trying to take her in the sitting room. So the girl is tells Hope kid, uh, I'm not comfortable in front of. In front of your <laughs> homie, let's go to the room, Sindio. Uh, so they go to the room. When they are in the room, uh, they're getting it on. Nini, nini. <laughs> the door opens. <laughs> <laughs> this is too graphic. Yeah, I know, but okay. I the, mean, the door opens. Uh, homeboy, what's his name? DK gets in and uh, is there, and apparently just gets in. I mean, f- uh, let me use say forces himself on mm. onto her. She didn't know. So that the girl then just wanted a uh, hope, hope kid. kid. Never yeah. wanted DK. Yeah, but now. But DK. DK. I, can, I, can <laughs> I remember yeah. reading a part like, <laughs> I think this girl was heavy. <laughs> I mean, I, she heavy. and so the girl w- didn't appreciate that. Yeah. I also wouldn't appreciate such a fat guy coming on. But I here mean, is the main contention. Mm-hmm. All that was okay, but. Now the girl them went back. Okay, to so she went back to Nax. And then they ho- sta- DK, sta- DK said texting texting. Nini, nini, and they agreed. <laughs> Which is very pe- peculiar. Like your I friend, feel, you're I, texting your girl's you, friend. Let me tell you, I, this story, if we if we are to un, uh, like discuss all the things that are in it, it can take us days and we apparently will become very toxic and I don't want to do that. But there are issues. There anyway, are very many issues to address so, there. So well, home girl is texting. The basis, the basis of, of the story let me, is... Le, let's continue is, now. Oh, wait, DK gave this chick some STD. Yeah, that's, that's after they texted. After yeah. they texted... He came they back. Came back. Finessed her. Yeah, and had uh, unprotected st- sex. And the chick has an STD that's an incurable. Herpes. Yeah. And HPV. HPV which causes <laughs> cervical cancer. <sighs> Damn. Okay. Now, now we get to them shits. Mm-hmm. Number one, these guys claim to be gospel artists. Let's just start there. And yeah. if self self proclaimed self, and if I can remember Sunday school teachings, I mean, you'd rather be like Willie Paul and say, "Me, I'm a Kenyan artist." Yeah. If you think I sing gospel, you put that's, me in your category. That's good. If you think I speak, I mean, I sing uh, secular, put me in your category. But me, I'm a Kenyan artist. If I can remember so my... So however ratchet yeah, I get, that's, that's up to that, me. That's up to me. <laughs> if I can remember my, my Sunday school teachings, mm-hmm. uh, sex is meant for marriage. And uh, it, there's no Which indication. doesn't really happen this, this time in I'm age. just talking about the standards that these people hold uh, themselves yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not talking about where, where, what happens <laughs> or what doesn't. I'm just talking about the standards that these people hold themselves to. So you're not supposed to be having sex before marriage. So you don't know if they were married then. They weren't. 
You this don't is, know for a fact. Okay, I don't know for a fact. Yeah. So, number one, where did you get uh, where did DK get Kwanza Alito? Where did he get happies from? That's none of our concern. You know, that those are all, all issues. Okay. That's none of our concern. So, and then now when that story broke, uh DK Kwenye beat tried to get ahead of it. As as most would, you know. <laughs> Damage control, PR, and what With did mother what, hen. <laughs> and Mama did, Wambo. Uh, she did, calls herself Mama Wambo. Yeah. What did, what did, who did he call? He called uh, mother hen of our, the beloved, our beloved. This Saizu is eight. one person who was already into the secular music. I saw a tweet saying, size it might look happy and all, but deep down, <laughs> she wants to bust out and twerk. <laughs> okay, she okay. she's a mother. Let's let's she's a mother. let's she's at a mother. least respect that fact. Uh, but I again, mean, even Cardi B is a mother. Come on. So, but yeah, that's a whole different yeah. league of okay. But you know, and so is it famously known for the Shamba Boy song back mm. in? Damn, that wasn't even HD back then. I think two or eight or two or nine. That was when that song was released. So, so is it does an interview with DK trying to clarify. <laughs> oh, this shit. Some PR happened. stunt. Yeah, some PR stunt. This shit happened. War on her. And then, Backlash. now, listen, first of all. And then, now, you know, the problem I have with this whole thing is like, they tried to scapegoat themselves by being Christians and blaming who? The devil. Oh, my goodness. I remember it was the devil, size 8, DK, trending at a go. And Willie Paul also was also Willie trending. Paul. I don't and know why Willie, Willie Paul was just chilling, chilling in his in house. His house. <laughs> And that's for all of us. He's is, trending for he's no trending particular, for no reason. particular reason. Yeah, so I mean that that that, that boosted his views and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause now because now people went back to listen. It was to like him. higher. But but what do you think about of size eight like joining in a conversation where she a had no business to be? I I think there. she was looking for relevancy, mm-hmm. and also she 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 thought she she's reached that career where. Her, her intervening, she's a mediator in the industry. Yeah. Like her word will be mm-hmm. will, will free off DK from this yeah <laughs> this trouble that he caused. Actually, the, the only thing I hate about this whole scandal is that they blamed that on the devil. That's the only yeah. thing I'm just. They never. They weren't even concerned on the victim. Yeah, and the like consequences of. At, at you, at, it's the devil who made me do it. As in that checks, uh, and we've seen a lot it, it it's not even just in the gospel industry but many artists do that maybe not the devil but they try to scapegoat in one way or another you know so they try to deflect here and there they try to make it seem as if it's not them who did that and it's it they just try to make it not about themselves they don't take personal accountability which yeah. i think is the main issue of this story the and devil so, was just stealing in hell he was just and stealing. Then he has aya <laughs> By I'm the being, way, I'm, being, yeah. I'm the one being blamed Yo, for X, gospel, and, X gospel, and Y. Apparently, the not gospel artists, artists, and you're not even artists, individuals. As an individual, you're supposed to take personal responsibility. If you do something, I it's think, on I you. Think I, 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 I'm not gonna say I liked how Hope Kid just apologized. She and left yeah, it at that. Yeah, no even, interviews. Even Hope nothing. Kid, even Hope <laughs> Kid. That's that's some nasty shit that he was on. Like, what what, what are you doing calling your homeboy to? It means it's not the first time. Yeah, maybe they were used to it. Yeah, they're used to it. As in, oh, why are you calling your homeboy and you I'm, were I'm saying, I'm not even saying the act. I'm saying like how he conducted dealt, himself. Yeah, yeah he but never did an interview. So yeah, he, yeah, he, but it he was, was just like, I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for the, to the girl and all that. But now DK, you know, he's trying to get ahead of it to make it <laughs> seem as if, you know. It's the devil. Yeah, and I've changed my ways. Oh, yada, yada. And apparently the next day, that story broke on Thursday. Or by Saturday, apparently, allegedly, or he had an alleged heart attack. <laughs> but no. <laughs> anyway, you can go on forever. And you know who broke this story? Rington. Oh my goodness. The father hen. <laughs> the cock. Another person. And now speaking of Rington, he's also trying to mediate uh, another Why whole do they issue. see? Bono and Ona, like they, 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 they have that role in the industry. I mean it's 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 that it's because they are Christians. I I, I mean they see specifically act them why like Christians. Why specifically them? Like why could, could it not be masterpiece? <laughs> oh, no, I, I'm even thinking there are even more mature people who can handle all that. For yeah. example, like if if uh, Wahoo, <laughs> why are you <laughs> laughing? There's nothing funny about that. <laughs> okay, Wahoo, uh, Amani. Okay. Well, I don't know. Why you're uh, Nini, what's her? Masi Masika. 
that, that if if she no, no I mean I'm not talking about intervening in such a situation, but yeah. if she stands up and and tries to meet, to come in between such a thing, she has at least a more respectable I mean not respectable name, but she has at least more credibility than all this or somebody like Jemima Thion. Like those are mature people in okay. the industry who can mediate between all this. But now the the lesson from all this is personal responsibility. So DK is being taken to court for intentionally uh infecting Infecting. somebody with an an S T D which is which is a minimum is it minimum or maximum of fifteen years in jail? Mm -hmm. And you know, because all all (coughs) everybody out there Young men, young women also know your know the situations you try to understand the situations you're yeah, getting yeah, yourself yeah. into. Anyway, with that being said, you know you can't go rambling on the. I mean, yeah, there's it's, a lot has been happening. It's sad. At a DK, when you, I mean Bahati and Mr. Seed, Bahati, they've no. been in rappers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that's a whole different. What's, story. what's up with this mu- uh, gospel? Industry? I'm telling you, uh, is there too much money is getting to the head? I, I do, you know like that's now, what I think for this Bahati, this Bahati story for me it is sorry too much money it's getting into their head it's it's just a testament of you know how because people if you look at blame the labels uh-huh. and 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 people say that if artists started their own labels people wouldn't be the people wouldn't, wouldn't wouldn't be shortchanging each other yeah. you know and now that we're seeing Bahati has a label and all of a sudden he's the one doing the short changing and he knows for a fact how it feels to be in such a situation where a label short changes you and they don't pay you what what you're owed they don't pay you your dues all those things they are supposed to do as in he at least is supposed to know that as an artist himself so bahati this owner i don't know ceo of emb records uh one of his artists is mr seed who they have an annual concert, EMB, uh, an annual Thanksgiving concert in at Thika Stadium every end of year at uh, 31st. So, the the concert that was in last for the beginning of this year in 2019, they tra- they were supposed to NYE 2018. Yeah, New Year's Eve 2018. They were supposed to 20, 20, New Year's Eve 2018 or 2019. Coming, coming into the new year of yeah. 2019, they were supposed they were supposed to have a concert at Thick at Thika Stadium. Mm-hmm. So apparently, um, <clears throat> the drama is two side two folded. So there is Bahati's wife on one side and Mr. Seed's yeah. girlfriend, who is expectant, on the other side. So m- Mr. Seed's, uh, let me say, girlfriend, was supposed to have a merchandise stand at the show, but. Bahati's wife, what's her name? I don't know her name. She called, um, I, I think her name is Diana, called the police on her. So she ended mm. up in hospital. And then now that's one side of the story, one side of the drama. And then now it, it is alleged that Mr. Bahati didn't pay Mr. Seed what he owed him after he left the, the, okay. the label. Okay. You see, and that's why I'm saying. So is he planning on paying? Maybe, maybe just delayed. Up, up to now, it has not been resolved. So, but mm-hmm. he hasn't said made any statement. He did an interview, although I've not seen it. But mm-hmm. he he did an interview and explained why Mr. Seed left the label. But now this comes in in the middle of I think uh, as the story goes is that the money is being taken. I mean, the money that was to be paid, Mr. Seed was to use it for his wife for the girlfriend's delivery for her delivering in in hospital and so it's so she's not gonna deliver she she is but <laughs> she's but there's no money you know it's it's a sticky situation uh, but as in uh, it's just like that artist and a label exec relationship is very it's gonna continue happening let me just tell you that yeah the, it's gonna continue that's, happening that's what the music Even industry is as doing. much as you sensitize people because people at the beginning of their career mm. they want uh they want a breakthrough so they'll sign with anyone who comes with an offer yeah you get mm-hmm. so even we, if we keep on telling people sign yeah. don't sign to yeah. artists sign yeah. to labels you just do whatever pleases you anyway. whatever works for you Yo. and, but the best thing you can do is sign a short-term contract. Uh, contract. Is a short-term contract better? Yes. Mm-hmm. 
because you'll be able to give yourself breathing space to think if you want to go back to that arrangement okay. once it's over. Mm-hmm. But if you sign something long, yeah. you've already put yourself in an agreement that you might not like after some time. If I can give yes. you an example. Uh, is Please do. I, but this is not even Kenyan. Yeah, just uh, go ahead. Future. Mm. He signed to Rocco, mm-hmm. the artist, and he signed for six I albums. So he signed to Epic. He did, but before he was, he was signed to Rocco, and he's, he the deal was six albums and I think ten percent. I mean, twenty five percent of or everything else that he did. But and then after somewhere in between there, Epic came in and they signed him. Apparently, for this new album, he was given fifty million. But now you see, in such a situation, he just left that contract shortly after because he didn't like the situation that was there. The six albums. And then I don't know 25 percent. That was a lot of money, so they had to settle out of court. And apparently, Future ended up paying more money. He paid, I think. I mean, give Future his million. bread. That guy has six baby mamas. Come on. <sighs> but he yeah. needs his bread, yo. Yo, but I, I mean, he should change his label, like his label. His first label. Yeah. But it's, it's what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, the, the world is like a really. It's sad to say it, but you have to be. Steadfastly. Like, if you if you want to if you want to pull a finesse, you <laughs> study Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean is the one who finesse manages. the label, the whole industry. Even I think Chris Brown owns his labels. Yeah, I mean, he, he's his masters. masters so, under his but I don't think that's finessing because no, he's no, no, been no. Si- signed since he was sixteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. yeah, you need to get. Oh no, Frank Ocean. What he did here that he was under G- Def Jam and was supposed to give them two albums. So he gave them uh, the first album in 2012, took a, a, a four-year hiatus, then released a second uh, video album that was 45 minutes, doesn't have any songs exclusive to Apple Music. Then two days later, no, he had fulfilled his contract with Def Jam for two albums. Two days later, he released Blonde, his independent album, and denied uh, and had already gotten the bag 20 million from Apple Music to release that album exclusively. Wow. So since e- <laughs> ever since King then, of finesse. ever since then, <laughs> I think Lil Pump also did the same. No, I don't, I don't think there's yes, he anybody. Did. Oh, he did. He 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 actually um he was signed and uns- using unsculpted methods. And school, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was a minor. Mm-hmm. So um after he released his hit Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. uh he he called a lawyer uh-huh. and said he was signed. Uh, and, under uh, duress. Uh, yeah, under <laughs> duress. Uh-huh. So basically, he owned the master to Gucci oh, gang. Damn. So they had to re- renegotiate. Uh-huh. Um, so he now had to give them a smaller re- percentage than what he would have. So, you know, with owning such a big uh, yeah. track, uh-huh. you have the leverage yeah. to say what you want. Yeah. So he went back to the label. I think it's UMG. Mm-hmm. UMG he said. Say this is this and this is and this is what we want, uh-huh. and then now he went back to a better contract. After that, uh, Frank Ocean scandal, Lucian Grange specifically sent a memo to all Def Jam subsidiaries and told them no more exclusive releases. We're not doing any more exclusive releases. It's bad for the market, and ever since then you've not seen any exclusive releases. People at the end of the day, these execs. They're trying to make money. Yeah, that's yeah. why you'll find some exec you don't even know his name. Mm-hmm. Label exec. He has yeah. an island in Bahamas. Yeah, they make a lot of out money. of the masters of these kids. And like. and <laughs> even I mean it's it's mostly the masters. Uh, even the new, the new music I don't think make generates as and much a lot money of as the three sixty cat- deals. Three sixty deals and yeah. back catalogs. Imagine who whoever owns the masters to Michael Jackson or Prince, how much money they are making. Yeah. You see, before I forget. Uh, last week we came on this podcast, and when I left, I realized I had messed up. We were supposed to Oliver Mtukuti, he passed away, and we didn't pay, pass, pay, pay our respects and pass our condolences to Who his family. He? Oliver Mtukuti, yeah, he's a, all I know is just he sounds like he's from South Africa. No, he's from is it Zimbabwe? Uh huh. Uh, yeah, he's 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 a he's an he's an artist. You know, Toddy. Nope. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's his own. That's one that's of him. His, yeah, he then passed. He passed away two weeks ago. I've rest, heard his song. Then. Rest in peace to him. And I and and then again. Um, How did you come from speaking about labels and then fast forward <laughs> to 
we are all over, we're all over the, the, you are all over the place anyway, today to and and uh, oh it again ayubo gada the kenyan legend passed away last week really yeah so we need to pay our respects to our condolences to the family of ayubo gada who who was well liked in the kenyan industry he gave ke- a lot of kenyans the urge to pick up the nyatiti which is a low traditional music instrument you know so ayubo gada famously sampled by Kanye West in the year album yeah uh, if you want to know it's called the song even, called yeah, even king kaka sampled him yeah 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 the kothbi kothbiro the yeah. song kothbiro and the song kothbiro which is such speaking an amazing of, song speaking of king kaka speaking mm. of king kaka yeah, so rest in peace to ayubo gada we're going to do his album review mm. real quick and at the end of it we should be able to know is he still the king or is badoni sunguch <laughs> Uh, I think he 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 has um yeah so do you think he's a king yeah he is his new album he is let's see let's see ah uh, yeah. so <laughs> first of all the album is called Eastland Royalty which is his fifth studio album after oh. Orutu Yamasudi uh the legend of King Kaka and all that plus um I don't know what the other album but he he this album comes uh, in the heel of uh, what's this song that we, that hit last year the lead single to the song dying dying he released I mean that Dundain. was a major banger i didn't like the song but that's too bad we'll, for we'll, you. we'll discuss it too, too bad we'll discuss it here. i mean that that's i like to call them the fantastic three those those, those magic's guys. anger uh, but they only key. have one song together they have two songs on the album Magic Senga and yeah. Christoph. Yeah, yeah Magic. Yeah, I mean Christoph is on another Counter song attack. the album. Counter Attack. And it's still by Magic Senga. Oh, the beat. Yeah. oh, wow, is it? So they have two songs on the album. This the album is 18 songs for the normal album and 22 songs for the del- deluxe version, which means it's four extra songs for the del- deluxe version. So well, first of all, what do you think overall about the album? I really, I, um. I really like it because for really for, really I I I this is an album that I listen to frequently. Is it outstanding? It is outstanding. But, But in what sense? In in the sense that okay, I uh, for a long time I have felt that King Kaka has been trying to catch one catch a hit and mm-hmm. I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad he which did you don't like. which I don't like but I just like the fact that that okay. he got a hit and and so that may, I think for me because he was trying to do like like the Besha Shigana the like he, there's a time where King Kaka had lost it uh, uh, for, in for your me, words for for me yeah. he had lost it he was trying to, he was chasing a sound chasing chasing that club club song that club hit that's why I'm saying I'm glad that Dundaing took off and it became that mm-hmm. club song that he's always wanted because it now enough allowed him to focus on the album and when you listen to the album it just starts off and i as in I'm, the first song i'm like this is it this I, when i first listen to the album i was like this this is the king kaka i know this is the king kaka the king kaka i like and it's it's an amazing album for me it is personally i think uh, it's really long let me that, just start, that is true. let me start with the downside mm-hmm. but i get these days with streaming yeah. you need more <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. more uh, album time to get more streams you know so i think that was him being an entrepreneur and a business person i think that was an approach he said i'm gonna feel this album like it's like it's like culture too yeah yeah but <laughs> so, don't you don't um, you think that's a, that's that's to the detriment of the quality of music no you can have all songs that are good you know in one album i don't think many people with more than 20 songs have good albums very few very okay. few uh Personally, I think you can put 100% in even 40 tracks mm-hmm. and still put it out. Only I don't think the are, number are, really matters. There are only That's but few artists who can put out. Chris Brown gave us a 40. 45. Exactly. The Dream has given us a 40 so, song album. I don't really think... So my, my question, to answer your question, mm-hmm. I mean, my answer to your question is yeah. I don't really think the length uh, determines uh, the, the quality output. Mm-hmm. So you can put even 40 tracks and are all good. Okay. According to how you take your time and the approach you take. 
what uh, the album Alaf- the Alaf- album cover uh-huh. the, uh Sorry. i was naming generally okay uh-huh. so i've said it was really long mm-hmm. the album cover mm-hmm. i mean he's a king so yeah. the, i don't know he's dressed in like chewy print mm-hmm. yeah right mm-hmm. so i think the album um the album cover is is decent i'm not gonna say it's really at oh like but, but you know it's a, it's a real painting it's okay, that was it's actually okay. that was actually auctioned for 32000 that's a nice shillings. fun fact so as i was saying the mm-hmm. album cover is decent mm-hmm. i think he was trying to portray him being a king another thing that really stuck out mm-hmm. was how this guy ali and all out on features mm-hmm. i mean from tracy morgan yeah talib Bridget Blue, Brian Nadra, Christoph. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, I'm sure he spent a lot on this album, like yeah. on commissioning all those uh, features if they were paying. The only thing See? that I, I I don't and also the producers. He worked with a lot of producers. Yeah, Magic uh, Enga, Jack Jack, Jack. Yeah, but I I felt like Lucioc. Jack was like the only was the predominant producer on that mm-hmm. album. Jack, I mean, yeah, Jack especially. Personally, I think it's Magic's anger because he gave us the biggest hit on the album. Yeah, but it, yeah. It, it was a good, it was a, it was a good album. So let's talk about the music itself now. The music itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, me, I found first of all my best track. <laughs> mm-hmm. The whole song is Salome. Was Salome? Yeah. Uh-huh. The storytelling part. Okay. I mean, this is one of King Kaka's best traits. Story a storyteller telling. yeah he's he's, a story he's good for story, storytelling mm-hmm. i mean he's good at storytelling mm-hmm. he's good at spoken word yeah like and also his word play is just like fascinating um say he'll just attach a nasal words hadi vibaya sana like he, 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 like the he, way he plays <laughs> mama <so. laughs> no, that's a story for another day so uh this the track <laughs> The album starts out <coughs> for me uh, with I think best track. Let's start with that. First. My best track, hmm. if not Dodoma, uh-huh. it has to be Bebandogo, or I would say. Dodoma. So you're not sure Dodo- which yeah, one it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I like a lot of songs, but I think Dodoma stands out to me because it's in, ter- in terms of production. Am I in terms, in terms of, of technique? In terms of the the whole general song. Dodoma is featuring at the band. Yeah. Uh, Dodoma part three. Part three. If you go check out part one and two. So for me, Dodoma part three is, I think, my best. Uh, but, and then um, East Coma Beast is also a, a close second. Mm-hmm. Because, as you know, in many, by many albums that we reviewed last year, they, they didn't, they tried, but they just touched on, like, social issues. But... By King Kaka, you can see a conscious effort to try and address social issues. Yeah. He starts, uh, East Koma Beast, which is the first track, is a piano track. He just starts by saying um, how... Spoken word. Yeah, they special. were living in poverty. He even addresses, not really addresses, but just clarifies that he has no beef with Saudi Soul. Talks about how politicians are crazy, but we are the crazy ones because we're the ones who elect politicians. Such, like, you know, such deep issues that are... For me, I feel like he he made a conscious effort to address these issues because in in other alb in alb- by other artists they just try to make you like the party thing and all that. But I, I would say the person who has tried the best is um him and Calligraphy Jones. The album we reviewed last year, mm. he, 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 they really tried to address these issues which are uh, substantial to the society at large. So What would you comment on the length of the album? It's too long. It's First too of long. all. There are songs I don't know here. if we can say, insist on that okay. as much as possible. Na- name a song that shouldn't be on this album. I'll give you a few. Let me name. One is... <laughs> okay. This Mbe- Mbesa featuring Maima. That one why? shouldn't be. What? That's why it's, I think it's one of the bonus tracks. It is. On the del- it deluxe is, version. It is, yeah? it is. It is. I think the one with the um, Ugandan song t- songstress. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, you are Pia ingine anafa kurudishia tu nadra ni so malebo. Give nadra back to song. Hiyo, kurudishia tu nadra. I mean, hiyo, yeah, aroboe anafa kurudishia. Aroboe, aroboe. Yeah, uh, you know. Look snatch. Uh, did, did you, yeah. Did you, uh, did you realize that? Even the, I mean, okay, let me, let me address something about this album. The songs that you can tell are King Kaka's, you can really tell they are his. For example, East Kwama Beast, Royalty, Selavi, Dodoma, Norm, uh, I don't think Norma is his. Counter Attack, no, Counter Attack is Christoph's song. Poison, 
mm, so my label is Nadra's song. One and only is not his song. Blessings is Steph Capella song. Why? Why would you say that? Just because someone built a, a hook doesn't mean it's a song. No, Come as on. in, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Let me let me nah. substantiate that statement. You can hear that he's struggling with the sound, King Kaka. You can hear he's yeah, struggling I with think the sound. What you're saying is that the what you're saying is if an artist dominates in in like creating the sound of the whole song. Yeah. Alafu mtu mwingine akuje akelea verse yeah. utajua you, you can tell and yeah. and that's what i'm saying blessings steph capella soma lebo brian adra counter attack the romain vago song the bandogo all those songs you can hear that this guy is just no the romain romain vago i think uh romain vago is struggling with that sound because it's not even reggae beat romain does reggae right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, reggae love tunes yeah, yeah. dancehall yeah, yeah. i think romain vago is Ali, Ali, it was just a, a rushed effort. Mm-hmm. I need a, an international collab. So, to take a room in Vegas up. Chap this Mbesa song, the last song on the album, on the Deluxe. Personally, I don't think he was struggling with it. Mm-hmm. I think it was just a cultural uh, exchange, mm-hmm. a nice cultural exchange. Mm-hmm. You get? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and plus the beat changes and all. So, it was just he was trying to reach new audiences yeah. uko uka, uka, uka <laughs> what, what what would you say about um, Oh, and then there is also what will you say about what? Uh, what will you say about uh, the? I've forgotten what I wanted to ask. <laughs> Come <laughs> on, get yourself to together. Ask. Okay, so the album being a tri- oh, so we are saying that this. Uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm fa- oh, I'm fantastic. Okay. Okay. But the album should be shorter than that. I'm just Which asking generally. Say? Generally, How we ca- but we can't insist more. We can't. I mean, we can't Insinu- insist less. Insinuate more on Say, how important. Give us, is. give us less. Because less like, is think, more. Less this, is more. If this album was like 13, 14 songs, it would have been so good. Like this song called Purple Dust, mm. uh, it, which contains a sample by. It, it's so enchanted. Yeah, it's con- so enchanted. It contains a sample by Rob Wasserman. Mm. Way someone I like Stardust. how you get into the depth. Yeah, it, the song is. And also, I like that song because it tells a story of I don't know a Lost. Twilight girl, uh-huh. a dra- I mean a drug addict. Yeah, you see, yeah. and a thief. Mm-hmm. If I'm not wrong, all those things. So those he's. Issues are I think the biggest uh, technique this guy has mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. storytelling. Yeah, in his bars. And and na iondio, I think he may find a kwa industry for long enough. And what do you think about his his actual his actual rapping technique? Because for the longest, I used to feel like he raps off beat, but he does it in a very nice way. Or he doesn't his cadence doesn't really flow with the beat. Off his, beat. I'm saying his cadence doesn't really flow with the beat. You know, like um for example, the most famous rapper to do that is like um to big biggie. Uh, notorious mm-hmm. where he 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 begins a, a line in the it starts there but it ends in the middle of the next bar which is what king kaka does where he he's going and then you can hear when the beat ends so the question is what i think about that yeah uh, which i think he does it perfectly because they, i i don't think there's a song where you can tell that this guy is rapping off but i'm just talking about his cadence being a bit off the beat mm, i think it's just part of his um <laughs> he opens a bag of tricks what's the yeah bag it's part of his bag of tricks and angekuwa predictable mm-hmm. we will not have been even talking about him right now yeah what what, what do you think will be the next single next single on the album mm-hmm. probably one with a feature it has um, to be one with a feature okay already do uh, dying was released <laughs> dodoma i think it's dodoma you think so yeah i don't think so I think counter attack will be the next counter attack. Yeah, but we've already seen magic. I mean, magic Senga and Christoph. So no, but that's a different sound. Or either counter attack or um, the bandogo, the Arab boy song. Yeah, probably because he wants. But how he wants to promote his artists? How come? Mm-hmm. At uh, what's the chick in Femi his one. Femi one ko album? That should be a good question. Mm. Are they are they in, are they in wrangles like <laughs> Mr. Seed and Bahati? Nah, I don't I don't know, but I don't know what I don't know what um I don't I don't even know the status of his label because there 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 are a lot of people and Mbithi. Mbithi is in King Kaka. Who's the who's Kaka Mbithi. 
You've not heard an artist called Mbi. I think I know him. Is he? Is, has, did he have a a, a song that With was King like? Kaka. Yeah, he did. I don't think I know. I'll him. put you on to his music. Okay, thank you. On. But uh, this this is a good album. Too long. It, 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 Besides it's, being it's, too long, it's I least, think it's least, it's it's, it's an enjoyable thing. listen. Mm. But it's just that you can't have one hour thirty minutes every day. Yeah, to listen to another the thing album. I liked about the album. I'm not gonna speak about the album. Like how he rolled it out it was really nice, and he had an advantage because he had a really strong single. single. Yeah. So uh, and to add to the fact that he proposed to the girlfriend, <laughs> his longtime girlfriend, oh, during the launch of the album. Yeah. Wow. And then he, he even got a major corporate backing from Songa by Safaricom, mm. Coca Cola. I mean, Remy Martin. Yeah, uh, all those people who were, sub- were there f- were sponsored yeah. this album. And he, he really put on a dope show. And he even gave a platform to the artists that he's, that are, let me say, coming up under him. For example, um, Femi Wan performed, Wangeshi performed. Mm. The guy, do you remember the song called, I don't, I've forgotten that song, but it was one of. As the, uh, it was a hit song, Ukosiri, Ukoshua, Ukoshua. You remember that song? Uh, it, it yeah, was, that one. That guy performed also. Yeah, so it yeah. was all those people who performed, and an amazing show because, and also the fact that he proposed to his girlfriend, and also uh, released the album shortly afterwards. Is it? Will do? We, will we say it's critically acclaimed? Not yet. I mean, if we are the ones. Cri- <laughs> if they're, if they're the ones are claiming it, mm. you can say that. Mm. However, it's not yet because it's not even. I'm sure there's some people on Mesketungo Mamoja Koy album. Yeah, that's single, Lundai. single, yeah. And Tracy Morgan's uh, song. I mean, two songs. Because only. it's a single. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think another song that's really strong as a single will be Selavi. But I, I think it's, it's a feel good song. Out. It's a really good feel so. And, feel and good song. he starts with. Pujo 504, Nakate and Zdani, which is like a classic ode to the classic, I mean, an ode to the classic Pujo 504, which is an amazing yeah. car, which is a legendary car in Kenya. That is like one of the classic cars in this I country. Re- that was one of the outstanding songs on the, on the, on the, nini? I, on the album, because yeah. number one, Ohm's Ali G-Stress, yeah. Ali G-Stretch out. Yeah. That guy, I don't Labda and Joe French, and but we don't know. As 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 an artistic um as 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 an artistic component, what do you think of artists trying all those songs as we can see Kika doing with Norma? He's doing a, a trap. I think thing. all artists should do uh should put themselves out out there mm-hmm. and try new sounds because the like c'est la vie. I don't know if that's how it's saying. C'est la vie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> c'est la vie. Labda it can hit in Fran- in France. You see. But it's mostly in, in English. I I'm mean, just in saying, Swahili, uh-huh. maybe it mm-hmm. can hit in France. Yeah, you see. The name. So mm-hmm. he's he's um he's expounding ban- boundaries. But in, and also, uh-huh. let me answer your question first. And also, he's exchanging cultures. Yeah. Because it's not only in French. Mm-hmm. It's also in English. Yeah. And probably Labda make a Swahili. I can't say that for a fact. It has. So mm-hmm. I'm exchanging cultures. That to happen. Yeah. See? So, Ion Gomez is a skika fr- uh, France, mm-hmm. a skika Kenya, a skika TZ. Yeah. No, no, and people will understand it. And yeah. And even I think. So I think artists, as you as you had asked, mm-hmm. I think artists should like spread their wings mm-hmm. and not be afraid to do uh, new things. In as much as I critic, I I have criticized King Kaka for trying that dancehall tempo, uh, so making that song into that style those club bangers yeah that's a la vie and i think the roman vago ones are songs that you can tell he's comfortable in them and you can tell he's doing the it's it's a song that a bit that fits him but these other ones i don't know what what, what i don't happening. think there's a bit that fits an artist personally i would like to uh argue that point out there there's is. no bit that fits an artist there is maybe a bit that goes well not fitting. I can't mm. say fitting is the right word. Maybe you can say maybe he he does good on a certain kind of sound. Mm-hmm. But uh, personally, fitting, I don't think. Okay, I'll I'll tell you why fitting. Because if you there are songs you listen to, and if you listen to an artist catalog, you can tell certain drum samples are tuned to sound a certain way. Like a snare sounds a certain way. Mm. So when you hear a song, you're like, 
that's not that's not Pepper's snare. Mm. That's not his snare. That's not his kick. That's oh, a, as personally, in you see, I've never done that. Such However, things. I think artists should reinvent themselves mm-hmm. because if we say like there's this there's this kick for this guy, mm-hmm. so if when that kick is out of is not trending, is not the trending sound. What happens to that? But you see, I that's that's what artists happens. Artists should sometimes. always reinvent themselves mm-hmm. in the sense that, like Kanye, yeah. no album sounds the same. Yeah. It's different. Mm-hmm. You see? Yeah. Oh, speaking of we, uh, so, so okay, fine. As we that, wrap up, yeah. What rating? What do you? What would you rate? I'll give it a seven mm-hmm. out of ten. Okay. Simply because of the fact that uh, seven, strong seven. Like if it was a seven point nine, I think it's a seven point nine. Nimem to Max Jew. This album is really long. The Kenyan market will not consume it all. At all. I'm a hundred percent sure that uh, streaming Zai Ngoma Ijafika. I'm sure they've only listened to two or three songs. But you know that's what you need in such a long album. What? That's why they make such long albums because you do realize that most of the these Kenyan songs, market. Yeah. Ma- ma- I've said the Kenyan market mm-hmm. will not consume it to, to completion. Its, to its completion. Yeah. So Nimem to Mark Moja yo. Mm-hmm. Another thing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, give people back their songs. Give, give, people back their songs. give <laughs> If you're struggling with a certain kind of sound, watch an album. Give Nadra his song. I give know, I think you, song. He needed to fill yeah, 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 the yeah. spaces. Maybe I'll come and say, and that's, the, and album. that's the problem. So, I'm to Mark Ingine. That's the, uh, yeah, the too seven, much filler. seven member Max Juya. The cover is really nice. Mm-hmm. The rollout was really nice. Yeah. The production is nice. Mm-hmm. And he's worked with so many international and local mm-hmm. um, artists yeah. to make uh, collabs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I personally would give it, I think, eight or seven. Let me say seven. Two. Be decided. Let me say seven. Uh-huh. Because I if think the same towards length. Yeah, <laughs> it's something that is I I I didn't and like the fact that it's 22 songs and also a lot of filler. You can make 22 songs that are your own, but now when you make 22 songs and you're just like, oh, oh, that's, that's your, oh, give me that, yeah, give me that verse Stop there. Stop hunting and gather. Yeah, give me that verse for there. your album. Make a verse. Give me yeah. that. Make a verse. And 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 also, I think from a technical standpoint, it sounds really amazing. Uh, I don't know where the mixing and mastering was done because I've tried I mean, looking he's, for credits. I, I think he has, he has a bug. Yeah. So he can afford the best mm-hmm. because he, if he put Jack Jack, yeah. put Magic's Anger, mm-hmm. that's like really yeah, 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 costly, yeah. you yeah. see? So I think even the production was really good on, on it, it's, it's and the really, mixing and mastering. Yeah, it's a really amazing project. So 8 over 10. I've started being keen on that. I'm, I've started being keen on mixing and mastering. Now, now since you've said you, you're keen on that, yeah. so Tissol released an album. Mm-hmm. What did you think? I've not... Long awaited and not long awaited. I am biased to say uh-huh. that that's their, their best uh, project out. Really? Yes. Because uh-huh. mm-hmm. it has the, the biggest songs in their career, mm-hmm. number one. Okay. Number two, uh, it was timely because... Time? Okay. It was timely. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm saying timely because... They had told us what I wanna release very long ago. Eh, what I wanna release track by track by track. So it's not the convention convention on album at yeah. singles Billy tattoo alafu album in to just care V2. You know album in We've all we've listened to all the tracks. And that's besides. my problem. And that's my problem. But finish first and then I'll tell you I why think, that's my listen, problem. This this is groundbreaking because why? Mm-hmm. They've they've chosen a different path. Okay. You see? Not doing the usual, that's the usual, like not sticking to the book. The, the tr- traditional rollout. Here's my yeah. single. After three, four weeks, yeah. here's my album. And it's an entertaining album. Okay. We can't, we can't take that away. We're not even album. reviewing it. We're just talking about it. Yeah. Because so me personally, I uh-huh. think that's the best album out. Okay. And if I, if if it was to be put out to be to buy, uh-huh. I will buy that. It's album. on iTunes. You can buy it on iTunes. Ye- yes. Uh-huh. Even physical copy. Okay. Again, Unua. Ah. Are you done? <laughs> yes, I'm done. <laughs> That's it. So to soul, I was really, really disappointed. I personally was disappointed by this album for for a couple of reasons. Mm. Okay, they had the, that amazing rollout that you're talking about. Let's release a single every month, and then after twelve, uh, after twelve months, we put it together as an album, right? They had told you that. They so had I told don't us know that. why you're mad. Or 
listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> they had. But after the six months, they stopped. Which means after after Tujiangalie featuring Nyashinsky, they didn't release any more new music. You understand? But they kept releasing, uh, they were on tour, which I understand. But I think, for me, this this is a rushed project. Because they were supposed How is it rushed and they announced this like... They were, supposed, they were supposed to nah. drop... No, listen, the, the single dropping, that single, single dropping, it was supposed to end in November. And they, in December, they were supposed to drop an album. They but were on they tour. Stopped. They were on that's, tour. That's... that's I'm the saying it's tour, just, that's what I'm saying it's rushed. Was, you were waiting for it on November and never checked. No, I was waiting and for a song in July. I was waiting for a song that's in August. You're mad. I was so that, waiting for a song in... That clouds in your judgment of it, giving it them not, a perfect score. It, it does. Because uh-huh. they never gave you what <laughs> Listen, you wanted when you wanted. But they told... That's, no, you told now me... Now I get your perspective. You told me that. I didn't, I didn't say... I didn't tell you to give me a song every month. You told me you'll give me a song every month. But they never said until when. They did. So they left. They, they left it open. They did. They actually did. And things changed. Ever, ever since uh, the f- what was the first single? Friend Zone. Mel. Mel. Fri- no, Friend Zone. Oh, Friend, Friend Zone. Zone was released in December 2017. They said this is for our EP that will drop in November, featuring every month. As in, just go look at that. The, the anyway, so what's for. your point? My point is they stopped that, yeah. and when they stopped that, they kept. Uh, they were on tour, which I which I, I understand. But if you want to, you shouldn't release an album that is this rushed. Because number one, it does not have any new music. It only has two new songs. It only has uh, Kama Sutra. Which is not a new track. Which is not a new track. It's, it's, not, it's just not been out. There is Kama Sutra and there is uh, Love, Love on the Dance Floor. Those are the only two, two new songs. The, the other songs that are there is Special Somebody, Ja Pre, Preza, who is a Zimbabwean artist. That song came out two months ago. Mbozi Zamalwa, Bebe Cool. Yeah, it that was last year. all those songs. That's the, my problem. That so, is my problem. You were supposed to give us new music. And they didn't. That is exactly <laughs> my point. As in, this, that, the reason I'm saying it's rushed is because, okay, it's, it's, like, you it's know in that, November. You listen, know, I think you're that kid that... <laughs> Unambiwati end of end of end of chukwe sleepers, vibe uh-huh. yatu, and then we go out, <laughs> and then you come out, you're mad because we're mekuate and all, but they bring you back sweets and you're like, I don't even want to eat those sweets because <laughs> you left me. Listen, I think you're that way. Listen, I think you're that way. Oh, but listen, but you've already expressed your feelings. Yeah, but okay, album. but I think we should wrap it up. And then right again, now. Listen, another thing, another call I have with this the special somebody song, <clears throat> BN takes a cadence of a particular song. Please go listen to that track and tell me what song that is because yeah. he's taking that flow, that kid as in the way it is. As in just I, I don't know what he song copied. it is. He copied completely. I mean people copy they even do, but I've just been trying I've, I've, it's not it's not a quarrel. I've just been trying for the whole weekend to figure out what song that is. So you don't like that you've not figured it out yeah. or you don't like that I don't like that I've not figured it out. Then and that's it's a, a really po- problem. That's why I'm telling our exactly. listeners to go tell me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you've had another, that. another <laughs> That's your personal problem. I don't another know problem. Another problem I have with the album. Yeah. They fucked up the mastering. I think you're just looking for problems. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, I think you should wrap up. No, but so it's all fucked up, up the mastering on, on that the album. Now we should wrap up. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's rushed. They <laughs> fucked up the mastering. <laughs> <laughs> so Tuso shouldn't be making this such an album yeah. this this late in their career. Mm. I, I, that's just me. I didn't I didn't like it. I didn't too feel, bad. I didn't feel there. Shout out to you, so Tuso. Keep on doing your thing. Yeah. Uh, Savara, I don't know why you stopped coming to Memphis. <laughs> He, he haven't seen you there in a while. He's on tour. They, they're on off. Tour. They're off tour oh, they now. They finished that tour. They finished. Okay. So um, I think we should wrap up by saying what we should we're doing uh, next next episode mm-hmm. you should review the decimeter, decimeter. Album. that has been making a lot of buzz uh-huh. drinks uh, my yang yeah that has <laughs> been, and there are a lot of bombshells in that uh, yeah album uh-huh. with from the legendary uh Sioux. Sioux mm-hmm. and his team yeah so with that being said thank you for listening to what is this podcast episode three season two and overall episode 18 <clears throat> Be sure to share this with your friends, amongst your friends. Yeah. Maybe we have a really uh, thank you for everyone who watches and listens to the podcast. Yeah. 
share it with your friends, any interest and parties, and follow us on all our on, socials. On everywhere, yeah. Yeah, see you next week. Aye, bye.